Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you had a chance to listen to the Lean Six Sigma overview video. Uh, this is the second part of our video series. We will have some more coming up in the future. Let's review a Six Sigma Greenbelt project, the, the search project. So the objective is approving search results with the 50 most common words searched on. This is for a Fortune 100 company. That for the problem statement, search does not produce effective search results. This high ratio of poor results drives traffic away from the site and hampers repeat visitors to our website. And the effectiveness of the database, inaccurate keyword results, there's no learning aspects to search, and there's no business control of the search results equals a huge defect. And on the bottom, you could see the high-level process. For the project goals, it's to increase the effectiveness of search, mapping the correct result set to the search query. This will allow users to get to the information they want faster. Improving the search results will um, increase um, the effectiveness uh, by 85% is the objective to lead to increased effectiveness and to achieve customer satisfaction. The project focus is that uh, it surrounds uh, the website and the results set presented in all searches. This will include the redesign of the site to accommodate the appropriate result set. And what are the CTQs? critical to quality. For the business, they need the ability to promote certain pages based on keywords. These are business rules that will change with high frequency. For the users, there were initially 11 different types of user groups that we segmented down to five to make it easier for our measurement and analysis. And what do our users want? They want a fast search. They want the results to match the query and they're presented with several options to choose from. They want the results to improve with time and they want the search results to learn to promote what the users find most effective. For the project requirements, with the website redesign, the goal is to improve upon the CTQ surrounding an effective search. And uh, that the top five words searched on are appliances, kitchen, parts, phone, and credit. So if we just look at the top words searched on appliances, we could see that the top results said goes to appliances, but three out of the five result sets um, uh, go to silicons and does not provide the diversity of the search results necessary from the users to choose from. Next, as far as with for the keyword appliances, so for um, for this, I have omitted the actual data based on signing a confidentiality agreement. But um, that the, the difference is that if you have a consumer or residential customer searching for appliances, they may want to purchase a refrigerator. But if you have an industrial user, they may want to purchase a refrigerated rail car. So based upon what the user's criteria is, 
um, uh, will affect the results of the search, and it needs to be diversified to incorporate all user requirements. Then once we've collected the results for each of the top uh, 50 words searched on, then we're able to total the baseline sigma measurement. And that we could see that five types of users times 10 plus 25 equals 75 opportunities times 50 of the word searched on equals 3,750 opportunities. Next, the defects are divided over the opportunities to come up with the baseline percent. Then we're able to calculate the number of defects, the defects per million opportunities, the yield, and the sigma value. For the measurement phase, a critical Y equals an effective search result. The CTQ, critical to quality, is the search result matches the query. An opportunity is each time a search is run. A defect equals no result matching the query or an inaccurate result. The type of data are the log files. The time period was a six-month period, and the data source is a search logs. And then, what are some of the top search criteria? What are the results for this, uh, the top criteria? How many queries are returned without a response? And what did we learn? and we want to focus on the critical excess. Next in the analyze phase, we're starting to narrow down what are the variables that have the biggest impact on improving the CTQs? What are the biggest defect drivers? What did we learn? In the improve phase, we need to eliminate the defects. And by following these steps, we should be able to improve the process. In the control phase, have the improvements eliminated the defects? Who will do what and when for the specific activities to monitor the process to ensure that your improvement action really works and remains in control? Sustainability. And then we want to implement the control plan and what was the final solution. The search project results, the goal was to improve upon the CTQs surrounding an effective search. Search was optimized by adding artificial intelligence so that it would learn based on past searches and it could be trained to anticipate user requests. Search was redesigned with AI so that the results will improve over time. Search results learn to promote what the users find most effective based on an algorithm. The businesses were provided the functionality required to promote certain rules that change with a high frequency and that it will steer the users to a specific page. An example, at the time there was a recall on the dishwashers. So if you typed in recall or dishwashers that we wanted to steer the users to the recall site so that this way that they had the information that they needed um, that was time sensitive. The search functionality was expanded to handle faster searches and to provide extra levels of result criteria. This was enabled so that the users had more choices, such as providing the hyperlinks to the relevant business websites without having to search thousands of keyword 
result. And an example would be that if the users can find what they're looking for in the first one or two pages, they're going to go elsewhere. So it's critical that we design it right the first time. The success with the Search Greenbelt project not only it achieved the goal of the 85% increase, the actual results yielded a 98% increase with the search accuracy and leading to increased effectiveness and overall achieved greater customer satisfaction. Define is the as-is process. Measure is the practical problem. Analyze is the statistical problem. Improve is the statistical solution. And control is statistical control. And it's all about to achieve the practical solution. Okay, next let's go into section three. Lean Six Sigma Black Belt Project. Okay, the project is called Improving the Ship to Closed Cycle Time. And the problem statement, the current order fulfillment cycle, the ship to close takes approximately 30 days to close an order for the safety division. And the problem is we've already completed the service and we've sold the customer the products and we're giving the customer free float that if it takes over approximately 30 days to close the order and then another five or six days for billing to invoice the order at the time, the issue is that 28.8% of the orders exceed the current target of 30 days to close, resulting in an excess of $3.8 million annually in unrealized cash flow. And as we could see that this is a big problem. Here you could see the high level process. The project goals is to reduce the 28.8 orders that exceed the 30 day threshold. That the target threshold objective is to improve the orders closed at or under 30 days. The project return would result in a monthly cash flow improvement by 200K and an annual cash flow improvement by $2.4 million, which is our target. Now, for the CTQs, what's critical to quality? For the business, they need to reduce the average time to complete the order fulfillment process because if we don't do this, then we're giving the customer free float. And if we don't uh, invoice, the clock doesn't start for the customer to pay, whether it's net 30 or whatever the customer terms are. So it's critical that once we complete the service and sell the goods, that we're able to close the order faster so we could invoice for the clock to start so that we could get paid faster. And then for the users, what do the customers want? So we looked at by market segment, and the vessel types. And the customer want the perfect order. They want timely certificates. They want perfect communication. They want to deal with knowledgeable staff. They want accuracy, quality. They want fast responsiveness. They want ease of doing business. And they want the best price. Okay, for the project requirements that listed below is the baseline data from fiscal year 2011 that shows the cycle times means analysis. And that we could see that 
Anything highlighted in yellow exceeds the 30-day threshold. So globally, we're at 29.24 days. Then we broke it down by region, and then we further broke it down by the orders that were completed in-house versus an ASP or authorized service provider. Next, we looked at the financial benefits analysis and that we could see that all of the orders in fiscal year 2011 represented 3,832 uh, records that um, amounted to $9.1 million. The problem is that 1,105 orders exceeded the 30-day threshold, resulting in $3.9 million of orders that were not closed out timely. And then further, if we go down to orders that were greater than 60 days, we could see that that resulted in $1.6 million. And then we could see that greater than 100 days, it was $611,000. And then that if, uh, if we looked at orders greater than 200 days, there were a few orders greater than that. And there was actually one order that was open for 684 days that we ended up having to write off as bad debt. Because if you got an invoice for a service that was done two and a half years later, you're not going to pay it and you're going to dispute it. So there you could see it was a big defect. Next, let's look at the Pareto chart that identifies the cycle time delays by category. The data was gathered from our European region um, that um, were compiled, compiled into 11 categories and then narrowed down into the eight most significant categories to prepare the Pareto chart. And that we could see that uh, we wanted to identify the significant X's and that the number one issue is that the authorized service providers provided us their invoice and their paperwork late. Okay, next we, we uh, prepared a value stream map for the order fulfillment service processes. And the high-level processes are preparation, schedule, travel, service, paperwork, travel back to the office, put it in the system, and generate the certificates. And that we could see we've identified which steps that are value added and which steps are non-value added. And value added are activities that the customer is willing to pay for or that adds significant transformation to the goods and or services. And non-value added activities could be regulatory or business requirement activities that the customer is not willing to pay for that either must be done or is waste and can be reduced or eliminated. Next, we've identified the cycle time for each of the process steps and the waiting time in between each process steps. Then we va validated the measurement systems, we prepared the detailed process maps, and we collected the data. Next, we prepared a fishbone, a cause and effect diagram that identifies the safety ship to close cycle time delays. So some of the uh, uh, issues that we identified uh, as far as with the potential causes with respect to the cycle time delays are some of uh, the that we had to uh, have 
uh, work with different time zones being a global company, the black back and forth communications, uh, the delays with our authorized service providers, missing information, too much paperwork, too many handoffs, and too many forms. So now we've determined the critical access and critical X's are inputs that most affect the process. And next, we want to make sure that we narrow down the critical X's, which brings us to the analyze phase. And the objectives are to understand and establish the key inputs that are causing the cycle time delays affecting the eventual output. And the goal is to arrive at a conclusion that isolates a few input factors that are affecting the negative outputs and what are the inputs that are causing our cycle time delays that exceed the 30-day threshold. So we first had 38 critical X's that by completing a cause and effect matrix, we're able to narrow it down to the top nine. And the cause and effect matrix, you look at all the inputs, the process steps, things that we've gathered from the Pareto chart, from the fishbone, from doing a five whys, a brainstorming session, and all of the uh, 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 the detailed process maps and all of the other data that we've gathered in the define and the measure phase to start narrowing down the critical access. And then once we did that, we, um, we looked at the, um, the process steps against the CTQs, what's critical to quality to come up with the rankings. And then after we narrowed it down to the top nine, we were then able to narrow it down to the top two. This brings us to the improve phase. We determined to come up with our uh, improvement recommendations and we ran a pilot in our Houston location. We performed regression analysis and we implemented our findings globally. So some of the things that we noticed were that any open orders greater than 14 days, we've identified and had um, the coordinators put in reason codes for the delays and detailed information that management would be able to report on. We've come up with a performance store scorecard uh, that was weekly and then a monthly dashboard that was provided to the senior leadership team that we um, had the management uh, work daily and weekly with the individuals and the staff to make sure that we reviewed the open orders, the issues, and had an escalation process. We instilled urgency with the, the team to let them know that we're losing money if we don't close the orders timely. And then we had uh, the business leaders responsible for the process oversight. Then for the control phase, we utilized uh, the weekly scorecard uh, for management review. We gave a handoff to the business process leader to um, assume control and be responsible for the daily, weekly, and monthly oversight and the reporting to management and the leadership team. We've come up with an escalation process to be able to have roles, responsibilities, and to take corrective action immediately if issues occur. And then with the uh, 
the project closure. It's all about keeping our process under control and achieving the financial goals. Then last is the realize phase. One year after completion of our Lean Six Sigma Black Belt project that we need to monitor the financial results to make sure that we achieved what our targets would be. For the executive summary for 12 months after the project was under control and, um, uh, and uh, closure uh, that we were able to achieve 11.4 mean is cycle time improvement and a cash flow improvement of $2.1 million annually, which is a significant realization, but was slightly less than the $2.4 million cash flow target. That as we could see that the first six months that we were able to achieve significant improvements with the cycle time and then that there was a slight decline in the last six months as that um, the management then starts focusing on the next things and we still need to instill the urgency to make sure that our process is sustainable. And then for the realize phase results that we could see that the final 12 months that we've achieved a monthly cash flow improvement of 172K and that we achieved a 39% improvement in global cycle times. In the Asia region, they had a 27% improvement. In EMEA, they had a 26% improvement. And in NASA, they had a 54% improvement. Next, as far as with for the cycle times means that you could see before we started, we were at 29.24. And then quarterly, as far as with what the results were, and that as we could see that the first six months, we were averaging 16% uh, global cycle times means, which was a significant improvement. And overall, that we were able to make significant strides. Then as far as with the uh, financial savings, that we could see the target was $2.4 million. And that for the 12 months, we achieved the 2. $1 million in cash flow savings. And then last, we want to show you our global dashboard, which was presented to the leadership team monthly. We did this not only globally, we also broke it out by region, so that this way that the leadership team can see um, graphically um, the global days open, the global open order dollars, the total number of records, what the trends are, and then a summary of the re, uh, results, and then any escalation notes that the leadership team requires action. And it's all about achieving the financial goals and achieving sustained results. Thank you.